kids. Okay, I want you all to be real honest with me. Oh, I'm, I'm talking to all you new gamers out there, all you young kids. You, you know, the ones who never had to go through three lives and no continues and password systems before saves. Yeah, y'all, be honest with me. How many of you know who Alex Kidd is? I expected that, okay. How about this? How many of you knew he was the mascot for Sega before Sonic was? Yeah, I figured that too. Well, <clears throat> Alex Kidd was the mascot for Sega before Sonic the Hedgehog came around in 1991. You go all the way back to the magical year of 1986. I was about two years old at the time, and Alex Kidd and Miracle World dropped for the Sega Master System. And that was the first of many games in the Alex Kidd series. There was Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle, Alex Kidd in High Tech World, Alex, Alex Kidd in Shinobi World. And then that long time after that, Alex Kidd didn't appear in anything until Sega Sonic All-Stars Racing. And now finally, Alex Kidd in Miracle World is getting a remake, a, D, a DX remaster, which is awesome. But then there's the topic of this video. The one game in the Alex Kidd series no one talks about. The time Sega decided that they wanted to bring him to the arcades to try and broaden his horizons to get his name out there. That's right, in 1986, just a few short months after Alex Kidd and Miracle World was released for the Sega Master System, Alex Kidd and the Lost Stars was dropped in arcades everywhere, and man, is this game a piece of work. <sighs> All I know is I'm just glad that I have this thing on main because if I played this game in an actual arcade, I'm pretty sure I'd drop about, I don't know, maybe an entire loan on a house on this thing. It's that bad. It's an experience. Something that you have to see for yourself. Which is what we're going to do right now. Let's check it out. <laughs> Let's get this thing started. The customer is king. Wait, what did I just say? The customer is king. The customer is king. <sighs> There's your first red flag right there. When you put in your quarter, your token, or whatever you're using, and the credit chime literally recites, the customer is king. A statement that's not always true, especially to you retail folks. Trust me, I know your pain. But when something tells you the customer is king, you know you're in for a world of shit. That means this game is literally kissing your ass before it puts its boot up it. But given we have a duty here, you must press on. So I'm pushing the attack button and nothing's happening. Yeah, you remember that big fist that he uses to literally ram it right through walls and blocks and other things to get items and coins and all that stuff in Miracle World? Yeah, guess what? He doesn't have that in this game. The attack button does nothing until you get an icon from these little falling star gimmicks that gives you an attack. A little shadow running thing that looks weird as hell. I mean, who would know that coming off the bat? And look at that. It only lasts you about 10 seconds. 10 seconds is all it lasts. That makes no sense. I mean... You would think that he would come with like a primary attack, like say he can have that 
same little shadow gimmick attack he has, start off with a weak pea shooter version, and then get some more icons, power it up, make it super powerful, and then if you die, you lose it and have to repower up again. You know, sub similar to like Castlevania or something. But nope, you have to you have to deal with a 10 second period of how long you can attack. On top of that, if you get another icon, you get an icon to jump, you get an icon to run faster. You have to make sacrifices. So you mean to tell me if you want to jump higher, you have to sacrifice attacking? If you have to walk, you want to walk faster, you have to sacrifice attacking? And you can't do both? That's insane! What I don't understand is at the beginning of the game, when you put your quarter in, it says the customer is king. And if we're king, why do you reward us? With cheap deaths. Cheap deaths everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere you turn, it's a cheap death. Oh, and get used to that scream, because you're going to be hearing that a lot through this game. It will be embedded into your head. Now you got your second stage enemies, you got these little mini SD Gundams running around and your finger pokes a doom that'll literally fuck you to death and you got these little things that try to close down on your head. And once again, it's plagued with cheap death. Cheap death is everywhere in this stage. Can you believe that? I just got killed by a fucking finger. A mechanical fucking finger. Because that's what it's doing. Finger poke a doom, ladies and gentlemen. Finger poke a doom. What else is happening here? What the? Okay. Let's try it again. <sighs> Serenity now. Serenity now. So I finally made it through and was able to retrieve that miracle ball from the dead Opa Opa from Fantasy Zone and on to the next stage. Now you got this Halloween Town stage where you got these flying eyeball looking jellyfish looking gimmicks and these moonwalking zombies. You would think a Halloween themed stage would have scary music. That music's not scary. It's cutesy and catchy as hell. Just like all the tunes in this in this game are catchy as hell. Yeah, have some catchy music to a game that's literally going to beat the holy living shit out of you. Makes sense, right? That's Sega for you. Why do these things look like swinging testicles? I mean, look at them. They look like swinging balls. Yeah, rolling skulls down a hill and it... There is a butt-naked, ass-shaking ghoul shitting out rolling skulls. I kid you not. It is right there. You can't make this up. They literally made a butt-naked, ass-shaking ghoul shitting out rolling skulls an enemy in this game. So after this shitstorm of a stage, I finally open the pumpkin, I grab the miracle ball, and then I'm off to the next stage. Now I'm in a water theme stage and all ready with the bullshit. And we're not even halfway done. 
And to be honest with everything I've been through in these last few minutes of playing this game, I really have no idea how much patience I have left to go through the rest of this damn shit show. This is insane. I did... Well, once Alex Kidd hits the water here and dons his signature snorkel headset, the controls get stiffer than a Stan Hansen lariat. I mean, it's almost impossible to swim. You could pump that button a million times, and it takes about five seconds for him to swim up. Like, seriously, they did not think this through at all. It was literally at this point where I've had enough of this game. I cannot devote not another second to this. Done. 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 No, I'm not doing it. No. No. Nope. Done. I'm done. Yeah, no. No, we're done. No, no, no. No, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. As you can imagine, this game was eventually ported to the Sega Master System. I would say the Master System version is way more playable than this, because they redesigned all the levels from the ground up and made it way more tolerable. Unfortunately, the whole attack system, the whole sacrificing attacks for jumps and speed and all that mess is still intact. But as far as playability goes, it's way better. Sega should be ashamed of themselves, but at the same time, what game that Sega made in the arcades back in the day didn't take your money, didn't make you invest an entire paycheck's worth of quarters into their machines? That's what Sega did. And unfortunately, their original mascot had to suffer. Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic's arcade outing was easier than this. That's sad. And that game used a trackball. <sighs> I'm Reggie Brown, and I suffered for you through Alex Kidd and the Lost Stars. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And check me out on Instagram. Brown out.